Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. My name is Sess. My name is Jill. And if you're just clicking this for the first time, kindly subscribe. Mm -hmm. We post one video every single week. Yeah. If you've been here with us, thank you and let's get into this. So today we want to talk about 2018 as the toughest year. Mm -hmm. Both before, of us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, okay, mm -hmm. Before even you, you talk about even 2018 as the toughest year, mm -hmm. I think most of the videos that we've been doing, it's all about the happy moments. Yeah. But there's reality at the end of the yeah, day. Because I know people are wondering, for you, you're always happy. Like yeah, life on always your side laughing. Is, oh, but there's so much pain. Yeah. It's just like also most of the time sharing painful stories mm -hmm. will hurt somebody or maybe now you just be that group who does sad vlogs yeah but today we just thought of just telling you that we also have our tough times True. our sad moments mm -hmm. and that was 2018 and it's, it's <laughs> funny to but be a long one let me laugh now because i'm not sure if i'm going to laugh uh, but I, i'll try i'll try that's why we are in a, as bumps yeah, at yeah. least that's why we are in um and that's why we are here in a park yeah. just so that we get that fresh air so that we we, we share when we know the, the place is a bit eh? open cool air and, and open. it's cool yes yeah. so uh, i think jill will have to start why did, why, why was 2018 your toughest year like it's our toughest year year in our lives mm -hmm. like the entire 28 29 years in seven mm -hmm. tough. i think 2018 was very very tough first of all sickness involved death jobs relocation there are way too many things and Jill is holding the selfie stick and moving a lot, so hopefully it doesn't shake a so lot. So I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. So for me, 2018 was very, very tough. Just to begin with 2018, um, around the 2017 December, heading to 2018, it was very, very tough for us. I think it began in December of 2017, when at least I had a younger brother who began sickness. And... <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing, but it's sad. Sickness. After that, I was relocating to Kisumu from Nairobi. Like the job was relocating us there, so it had a very number of hiccups. You can imagine moving to Kisumu. You have to go live with your mom again, and here you're used to Nairobi, living by yourself. And you know, Kisumu is like a village. Okay, you're laughing. Okay, I think because <laughs> because you can't cry. Because I can't cry, because it is what it is, and that is life. To some point, I think when you've been through a lot of things, it hardens you. So you're like, it's just a passing cloud. Uh, for me, 2018, it started tough because uh, my girl was supposed to start school in 2018. I wasn't even sure where she was going to school. So already it was January, and I was moving up and down trying to find a school and where. Because uh, previously, mm -hmm. I resigned from my job. And uh, okay, my mom was ill, so I had to take care of her. So here yeah, I was, jobless. This girl is supposed to start, start school where mom was still sick. So it started when I wasn't even certain where I'm going to live. Number two, I didn't have a job. Then, and you're searching for a school too. You don't know whether it's in Kisumu, Nairobi, Limuru. It, it, it was tough. It was yeah. tough. And then uh, came April, I, I had to go home to take care of mom again. Mm -hmm. Uh, this time round, she was more ill than she was before. So I said, okay, finally I got to school, my girl was admitted. And then now here was April, they had closed schools. Then I said, let me go home. That's in 2018 still. 2018, okay. yes. mm -hmm. Let me go home and help take care of mom. Cause you know, she was ill. And most of the time now she could not do at least almost everything yeah. on, her, on her own. So I knew the people who were home were now tired. So it was my turn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I went home and it was tough, feeding her, doing everything was, was not an easy thing. So emotionally, I was drained. Mm -hmm. Remember, I didn't have a job. My girl was school already there. They didn't take care of everything yeah, at the yeah. time. So I was dependent on him. Everything Mom on him. was suffering from cancer. You know how expensive it can be? And we had just came from India mm -hmm. and she had not healed. Mm -hmm. And not only even being expensive, when a family member is sick, in a way, you the old family members that are present are also very sick. Yeah. It and, happens. And it drains. Yeah. So that was already April and I was already tired and I was already drained and there's nothing we could do because we had to do what we had to do. You know, also when somebody's sick, she expects the best from you. So you really have to give the best, mm -hmm. which we tried to give the best. Unfortunately, she never made it. 
So in the same 2018, the same April, because I, I went home for like, I was to spend two weeks before schools opened. So I took care of her for like a week and she passed the, the following week. Which before. month was this? That was April. Oh. So that is the same year, that is the same month that she, she passed. Because now I think it was just too tough on her, the pain was too much <laughs> and she passed. I think there's the, the, the okay with us. I think me and CS, there's a lot that bonds us together when it comes to pain and sickness. Because I was just saying, I, I, I started by smiling, but it's not all about the smiles and everything. But even me in 2017, in 2018, I lost my brother uh, with sickle cell anemia, and uh, that was in January, the 20th of January. So I think for us, the, with the, the sickness started in 2017 December, so like he was in HDCU, that's high, high, high dependency unit, yeah. for like about one month and some days, and then he passed away. And it was very strong, I can remember my yeah, sister's remember. graduation in 2017. <laughs> it was so funny, yeah. because they traveled with mom to Nairobi, they came for my sister's graduation at uh, Nairobi University, that was supposed to happen at, on 22nd of December. And then the following morning, I mean, they came on 21st, now 22nd of December, we couldn't even make it to the graduation because it, start, it started falling sick by then. So we had to take him to Coptic and then he was referred to Kenyatta. There he got well and then we traveled to Kisumu on 25th just to throw my sister a small bash of the 26th of December, that's the year 2017. Hey, we never knew that. I think that those are the last moments we were spending together. In fact, we really had a very good day on the 26th of December with the relatives and everyone because we didn't make it to the graduation. Remember, my sister gradu graduating by himself, each and every one by of herself. us, by herself, each and every one of, our, of us, we were in hospital anticipating, I don't know, it was crazy. In fact, when Coptic referred us to Kenyatta Hospital, I can remember they referred, uh, my, my, my brother fell ill like um, at around 5 a.m. in the morning, so we had to rush him there because at least with private hospitals, they're very swift, they're the public, and you can imagine the number of emergencies Kenyatta Hospital normally gets. So when we were referred there, we were referred there because, it was not working because of the condition, yeah, it, was, it wasn't working. So he got admitted, imagine from around 8 in the morning, he got admitted at 7 p.m. at night. Somebody is sick, he's not being attended to. And then there's a nurse who was telling us, do you know a doctor here or something? Ah, well, like, so that, was, that was the first test that, it could, that could work. Eh? That could work. Like for you guys, were so lucky that it took like 12 hours. Imagine from 8 to 7, I don't, I don't know how uh, many hours those eight, are. Eight hours, They're like, yeah. people normally come in the morning and they, go to, they get even admitted at around 10 p.m. at night. I was like, what? Mm -hmm. So from there, he got well. We traveled to Kisumu on 25th, 26th. We had fun. We had this bash going on. And then 26th to Siku, Ugonjo, Atena. That's where he got, he was rushed to the hospital at around 10 at night we were making stories bonding relatives cousins aunts and everything you can imagine that miss i mean, I mean the, with them people miss each other so when you get that opportunity we talk and everything so i got sick by that time at 10 p.m i remember my mom was saying you guys you've been making stories all day all night you should go sleep so when each and every one of us was preparing to go sleep i'm wondering he came back mm -hmm. Like he went outside, I think maybe, I don't know what, whether he went to the washroom or something. Then he came back, headed straight to the dining room, and then he went to put his head on the deep freezer. And then I was in the sitting room, I was, I'm like, what's going on? And then he was crying. That's when maybe the sickness, I don't know what was going on with the, his head, I don't know, I can't explain. Mm -hmm. So he was rushed to Avenue Hospital at night, he started convulsing, and then he was referred to Jaramubi Ogingo Dinga, that's in Kisumu. So from then, remember that was the 26th, and I had to come back to Nairobi because I remember I was working for a local television station and I was on a shift that uh, my shift, Christmas. yes, my shift was to start after 25th. Mm -hmm. So I was supposed to start at 28th. Yes. So this is 27th in the morning. We rushed into the hospital in the morning, that is at Jaramugi Gingodinga, because the first uh, visit is normally at 6.30, or is it at 6, and ends at 6.30. So it was that very early morning, no one is re responding to our calls. My mom and dad and brother went with them, but I remember my brother and uncle, they came at around 
four in the morning but they weren't speaking to us we were like what's going on so with us we were like maybe he's died and they are not communicating so we had to rush in the morning i can imagine <laughs> our home is somewhere in Kibos, somewhere in the village Kidogo. Not a village per se, but it's a walking distance from the main road. So you can imagine a group of 11 people walking at like about 5 in the morning, <laughs> heading to the stage, going to Russia. When we, when we were at Russia, we tried calling mom, they, they weren't responding to our calls. When they saw missed calls, and then she called back, and then she was like, we headed home. I'm like, you headed home. Matimak is in the hospital. You're like, okay, which room is he in and everything? So like, apparently he felt well at least a little bit. So the soldier was like, only one person can go in. And then we pleaded. They allowed two people. Me, I couldn't take it. So my sister went in with a certain relative of mine. After then, they confirmed the situation. He was just doing well, but he was so tired even to speak. So from then we knew that he was to recover. So me and my sister we traveled back to Nairobi in 28. The situation went worse. I don't want to talk much more about the sickness and everything, but he stayed there for long. He was referred from the ward to the HBCU and then he lasted there for some couple of days. I mean from that day, from that 27 to the very moment he died, he never spoke, he never saw, he never listened to end everything. It was worse. I wouldn't want to delve much more into his sickness. Maybe I'll just have to respect that, but it was not good. It was bad. Sorry for that. And then, that is the same year, I'm relocating back to Kisumu. The company was relocating back to Kisumu, and there's nothing I could do. So you can imagine relocating back to Kisumu. Each and every morning, I have to wake up, and my mom was so persistent. And my dad also had to leave job and everything that he was doing because he works in Nairobi. He came to Kisumu. So each and every morning, we are at Jaramogo Ginga Hospital. So I couldn't stand it because my mom, yeah, Kenda, as we go in the hospital, he doesn't want to leave or go back home. So she'll stay there because she has a lot of friends in Kisumu who will come uh, see the boy in the hospital. So she she rather spend the whole day there. So I'll just come in the morning, we see him. You, you Remember we seeing somebody who is not talking, is not seeing, is not, is not hearing, you know, it's that bad. And then remember in the HBCU, only two people are allowed per bed. It's terrible. I know. I, I don't even want to go through It's terrible. Last I, I can't even go. Even, you know, it's like draining when we have to go through the sickness and yeah, everything. Yeah. It's draining, yeah. So, okay, maybe I pick from where I live. <laughs> I don't want to go through what my bad. Maybe I think I, 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 I jacked you because I think oh. I'm the one who had that fate. Like, um, oh. like we had the death before you guys Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because your so brother died in January. In January, yeah. yeah. My mom daddy died in April and just like I said, I was with her. So even the very last seconds, we were together. That passed. So I remember even when, you remember at my mom's burial, I had cut my hair. <laughs> I had this terrible headache. Mm -hmm. Like I had a terrible headache that went through for months. So I think just uh, a few days before uh, we buried mom, I decided to go and see a neurologist because mm -hmm. like I was feeling strange. Mm -hmm. There were some, I don't know, veins running through my head to my neck. Sometimes I was so straining. So I just decided, let yeah. me go and see a neurologist and know what the problem was. Oh. That guy told me, there's nothing wrong with you. And I was terrified. Do you know I went home and then did my hair? I know, and because I cut you feel sick and somebody's like, not even if taking... If I'm not sick, then it must be something physical. Yeah, so yeah. I had put on some nice human hair with, you know. Then I just said, let me cut it off. But still, my, my headache never went away. Mm. So that is when, when I came back after the burial, now I started the journey to my um, treatment. It took more than four months and five months. Because I had this terrible headache. I was sick. My whole body aches. But every hospital I would, I would visit. And would you say, stayed mourning at the same yeah, time. Yeah. Now, you know, my problem, I, real, I later realized that I never mourned mom enough. I was with mom in India for like three months. And just like... I, I just had to be strong for her mm. so that we could pass the whole process. And very we came true. back to Kenya very healthy. In fact, at the airport, they will ask who is sick or who was sick. Mm -hmm. So that means that when we came back, we were very okay. And mom was very okay. Mm -hmm. So all this time, maybe when I cried well, once or, second, or twice when mom was or not seeing. So I was just, yeah, something. I was in denial. So I really mm -hmm. wanted to see her through this. So, and I had seen her through worst pains. So when she passed, I also said maybe this is our time to mm -hmm. go and rest, you know, and just get away from the pain. 
my sisters, some of my siblings, yeah. they cried. And I think for them, it was good for them. So mine had actually stuck here. I think because you saw her through everything. Yes, and, and then you saw her even recovering when you yeah, guys were so coming I thought from India. By her dying, maybe she was at a better place. So actually, mourning is good. So I never mourn. In fact, even my girl, my favorite year old realized and she asked, Mom, but you never cried even when mom, your mom passed. Then I said, no, it's okay. She's at a better place. So later on, this people thing started haunting me. I think me. people mourn yeah, And I think in the course of yeah. 2018, I almost got depressed because I was visiting hospitals. Okay. There was no, uh, I wasn't found with any kind of illness that was serious. So I was never treated. I was going from one specialist to another. Remember, I did not have a job. I did not have an insurance. So I was training my husband also. And I remember there were days, I went for days without showering. It I went for days without, you know, my hair had cut it. So it was somewhere short. Mm. I could, I didn't even have a comb. I could not let a comb go through my and hair. And then you realize that nothing means, I mean, like, as long as you have, you are like, alive. No one would even ask me why I'm not even keeping, I'm not even neat. Because I would sleep, wake up. And I remember also I had lost my phone. So I didn't have a digital phone. My phone was a kabambe, meaning I was not going through social media, Facebook, WhatsApp, nothing. I had a kabambe, you'd even mm. call and I would not receive it. Mm. So I think I worked in hospitals, mm. I saw neurologists, all specialists, until I was now Googling who should I see next. And I remember there was a doctor at Avenue who asked me, mm -hmm. You're sure there's nothing wrong with you? Remember, I was in denial. Mm -hmm. I told that doctor, Nothing is wrong with me. My mom passed on, she was suffering from throat cancer mm -hmm. like serious pedial so i had this pain there's this lump so it was imaginary i think i thought that i had cancer also not even imaginary <laughs> per se because at times when you hurt mm. or when you need to re cry when you, I, and then you keep on i mean like i don't know like you keep on persevering you feel like you're being shocked and you, you know, know it was real mm. that i would go to bed speaking and i would wake up without a voice Yes, it was that tree. Mm. So when I, I woke up and I'm not talking, and I remember my younger brother was like, What's Are you serious? On? Are you normal? Mm -hmm. You were just talking the other minute. Right now, you can't even talk. I will be whispering, and there was no sound. So I was convinced that the doctors are finding something, but they are not telling me. So I was <laughs> I'm changing hospitals every now and again. Mm -hmm. And remember, I was not showering. Sometimes I would sleep the whole day, the whole night in the house. I would let Habit take care of baby, go to prepare her to school and back, and he used to suffer. And but I really thank God he really supported. I think yeah. he really supported. Support, yeah. There was no day mm. he woke up and told, told me go and shower. Like he just did whatever he I wanted. You. I would yeah. wake up and say today I want to go and see mm. this specialist at Parklands or whatever, and he'll say it's okay. Mm. Just go and send me the bill. Like. I think that's where spouses even they come in and help us. 2018 even was tough, and I had applied for jobs until I had given up, so yeah. I was not even looking for a job. Mm -hmm. So I remember there was also one person who really got me out of depression. Mm -hmm. You know, some calls, most calls actually I would not receive. Yeah, I would not receive, and I think he had gone through a same, the same situation, so he really used to check out a uh, check up on me. Mm -hmm. So anytime I would not receive a call, he would text okay. and say. Please pick up. And I remember he sacrificed all the way from here. He lives somewhere very far from where I live. Mm -hmm. But he came towards us and said, I'm at this place, come and meet me. And I think that was my first time going out. There are some people who understand that. That was, yeah. Mm -hmm. And he really, he literally dragged me out of depression. Like he dragged me. He told me, come out. I am outside here and you must meet me. Mm -hmm. Just as a friend. Mm -hmm. I went, met him. And you know, he was like, no, you're doing okay. You are well. You are. And I knew I was not doing okay. <laughs> At times you have to pretend just to be. Yeah, so just 2018 really, and that's why they tough. say you really need to check on your friends. I know my friends would even call and I would not even pick. Mm -hmm. Some of them would call, I would call, I will receive, I will laugh, and they would not even know what was wrong with me. Yeah, that's what so. depression means. Depression. At times you are laughing. Yeah. At times you're crying. The next day you hear somebody is dead. So I think They've even as much as 2019 uh, still was tricky. What I had in 2018 summarized all my tough life. And I think, apart if there's no death, things can be handled. They always say <laughs> there's nothing as tough as losing a loved one. Yeah. Like a loved and one, also when it's blood. Have you talked about losing jobs? It, I mean, I mean, for me, for me, I can just say losing a loved one, yeah. most, even if through death. 
that's the toughest Yeah, 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 thing. I know. Other and things we can handle, like yeah, losing yeah. jobs, I can just laugh through it. We can it. talk about 2019. <laughs> how, many, how many jobs do you think you've lost? Me personally, I think that will be a story of another day because I've lost, been fired twice. So <laughs> you've been fired and hired. And you know, most of these things, they fired happen at the same time. Yeah. Like, we've shared so much. At like, times, I'm like, I, when your, your great grandparents, they cast us. As soon as I ask myself, what is it that is following us? What's going on? But I believe everything happens for a reason yeah, yeah, and they make yeah, yeah. us And we've tough. pulled through. Imagine and we've pulled if through. I pulled through 2018 in that situation, if I'm here today talking yeah. about it, mm. then I, I I pulled through. Then God is good Very and true. he's really Faithful giving yeah, and he helps and us a lot. And he's giving us things that we can handle. Mm. So we can very talk true. and talk and talk. Me can say 2018 was the very toughest year. Yeah. And me can say, whether you lose a job or you, no matter how many things you lose in this world, they can't compare to death. Yeah, I think you also you can talk about, because what I've said is the person that, there's a, a guy, like a friend of mine, who mm-hmm. really got me out of that tough situation. Mm-hmm. My hubby was supportive all through, all through. And then this guy, so how do you handle tough times? Because I know that is a tough thing, a tough thing, and that is why most people even Very commit true. suicide. Because Very when you, true. you reach at a point where you can't talk to anybody, you are at a corner, and then you feel the next thing is taking your life. So I think my hubby, and my, my baby girl was also always there. And you know, for her, she never even realized there was something wrong. So anytime she would want to cheer me up. So her presence, my hubby, and this guy would literally got me out of depression. Those really saved me. They really saved me during those tough times in 2018. I can say whatever saved me because I was going through a lot. Remember after the burial, my brother was buried in the same compound back at home in Kisumu. So you can imagine every day. So uh, after the burial, definitely people move on with their business. Yeah, yeah, they go back to their back homes, to their normal, life, yeah. normal life and everything. So my siblings, all of them went back to Nairobi. My dad went back to Nairobi. I remained with my mom alone, the two of us in the compound. And my Reality. mom, my mom, even I thank God, when I say everything happens for a reason, this is for a fact. Because remember, this thing is happening real quick. I'm being given a transfer back to Kisumu. At the same time, my brother is dying. And my mom used to live with my brother, just yeah. the two of them. So I'm here replacing my brother in one way or the other. So I used to come back home in the evening. I'm all by myself. I think my mother, somebody advised her to come back home late. Maybe, the, when, when maybe it's at dark, night, right? when it's dark. Because the kaburi, what is the kaburi called in English? The graveside. The graveside is still green. There are still flowers on top of it. Remember, I could come back home. I'm all by myself in the compound with only the graveyard. At times, rain is about to rain. I'm like, how oh, I wish I can do something. Maybe go cover the grave with an umbrella. I think the things you, you can imagine about. You, you're there thinking, in the house you warm and everything, and there's someone is lying maybe in the graveyard, in the graveyard maybe they're being rained on. There are a lot of things to talk about, but yeah. I think it's um, one of the things that helped me a lot. I think I stayed in Kisimu for like about six months, and, and then I, I got another being job. Close being close to her. I think with me, being close to her was the something that I think I can talk about, because it gave me much more strength because when he was down, I could behave as if I was strong enough for her. So I wasn't showing anything, but I was very strong. But when I went back to the room, I could cry, cry, cry and cry. But when with mom, I could be very strong. I think I made her strong in one way or the other. And then I got another new job in Nairobi. So I had to come back. And then the same way, I think, out of the pressure. It, it, yeah, it got me out of that environment. environment and then i think in the same year i also married my husband towards the end of it that was in and the December. pressure of planning the wedding was and another. the pressure was planning the wedding was another thing and my hubby was now insisting maybe get married in 2018 because we had had a very tough year from the end of 2017 2018 so he wanted us to end the year in a very good note yeah, yeah. which one which worked, worked. Yes. and then 2019 yes. is also here trying to test me believe in me it won't work in 2019 we are laughing these things out and yet i'm not going to be stressed again because then i'm laughing because i know everything it's, it's, it's never that serious it's never that yeah, serious in exactly. life today we lose tomorrow 20, we no, 2018 was, was tough there are things you can tough. control there are things yeah, that you can't you, control you cannot control yeah so that is it guys i know you have tough times too Mm-hmm. Maybe you tell us how you get through it because we are not we don't want to die mm-hmm. young. Nobody's dying because of stress. Because one thing I appreciate also is mm-hmm. 
bad times they pass just they like pass, good times yeah. pass mm-hmm. and you get another good time or a bad time and yeah. it makes you stronger mm-hmm. we, I, I feel I'm stronger because of what I went through in 2019 yeah so, you're stronger but there, there are those moments you feel down yeah, yeah, and you start yeah. thinking of your the people died and everything but yeah. it happens that's life anyway so. that is it for today <laughs> Thank you, and I feel, me, I just feel refreshed. Maybe one day, one time, we'll talk about the conditions and yeah. how to you know, take care of, them, of the terminally ill conditions. Yeah, you both know? of them had terminal uh, illness. illness eh? Yeah. That is cancer and sickle cells, eh? which I know many people really suffer, suffer from. from. Yeah, and yeah. it's tough. But one thing I know, God knows everything. That is it for today. Have Thank yourselves you. a lovely evening, morning, whatever time you're watching it. <laughs> and don't forget to subscribe. Support us. <laughs>